ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, we're taking a look over here at Shechedron for our next Steel Division Season 5 coverage of League Play. Rang, uh, I'm seeing some of your countrymen on here. Who are they fighting against? Left hand side in blue, we have Eugene playing 17 success, Pandagon D Division with a Vanguard income. On the right hand side in the red, we have Nilla playing 3rd Canadian with a Vanguard income. And we gotta take a look up north, because Nilla just did the classic Napalm opener with a Mosquito Napalm Bomber. A very cheesy play, but he is going, as you see by his deck list, extremely heavy in a phase he's he's a phase or bust baby it seems well i mean the crazy thing too is there's, there's this willy hmg rush which <laughs> is hysterical we don't get to see this very often and when we do it's either it's this hell bent for leather charge yeah nila just really wants to throw off his release uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. um bullish over here gonna get hammered yeah, uh, at least until the martyrs come up and the stooks come in as well. But I would not be surprised. Well, oh wow, actually, the Volkswagen I always forget are, are actual troops. I mean, they're airsats with with better weaponry. Yeah, but they're good. They're, they're like not bad, apart from the fact you have still disheartened and they do get pinned down faster. The martyrs are gonna, like, yeah, the napalm does dissipate in time for the martyrs to push up. So these release are about to be rather surprised very shortly. Well, there's, there's, there's two Shermans coming up behind him, so yeah. the Willies, I don't think they're going to be hanging in the wind. Um, yeah. But regardless, they're going to probably get at least a couple of kills. Yeah. Damn, those things are fast. Yeah, holy... <laughs> I do love how he just relocates immediately. He doesn't even want to stay out for any potential fight. I'm rough interested why Eugene brings so much armor up north immediately at the start of the match. He doesn't have a lot of recon or infantry currently to back him up. Now he doesn't. Now he do yeah, now, now he doesn't. And then the release are just going to relocate into the central position. Down south, things are actually very quiet as both sides are probably micro-intense up north, just trying to, you know, push one another. Well, Legionari over here as well. I, I don't know if I would be quite this aggressive with these willies against Legionari in green cover. Yeah, yeah, they do have the range advantage at least, because Legionaries don't have a machine gun. The mm -hmm. MG42 is going to, well, change that up a bit. But it's still a pretty good push here. I mean, it just, it's match right now is just following the release, but they've actually been relocated to a good position. Nilla's moving in the Rifleman, and then if he can capture his hill, that's a pretty big early game advantage. And he's going to need it, because the way he has his deck set up, He's, he needs to run in like the first 20 minutes or he's going to have a bad time when C-Phase hits. Because Eugene actually brought C-Phase units. Which is weird to think. I mean, what kind of commander brings C-Phase units here in, in Steel Division? 1v1. <laughs> the game without a time limit. Yeah, it's a very it's a very risky proposition how Nilair is playing. But I'm curious to see if it will play out for him. Because the Northern Puss has definitely been stifled with that Marta Stug battle group at least. And it is still 12 trove, so Nilla needs to try and be grabbing some flags. He is pushing a little bit down south here, or engaging with some rifles. Yes, it's very tentative. I mean, the Sherman yeah. 3 is good, but when you know you have Legionari, those Death's Head fanatical troops are absolutely awful to fight against. Yeah, you just cannot... You just cannot do the classic off-map artillery and then surrender them, because they just run surrender. But I guess when you think about it, they hold exactly as much territory as they need to. They got the two flags in that town. Yeah. That's all you need. There's no point really pushing up further. It's a very bloody cost to try to get that last flag in the town. And then the other two flags, deeper into enemy lines, you're just not going to get, yeah? yeah. They're just they're pointless. Excellent flag placement now, Eugene. <laughs> I mean... The they're not pointless, they're just unnecessary. Yeah, you're just not gonna... Like, there's a lot of flags in this map, as you can see, where they're deep into enemy lines, and you're just never gonna capture them. So really, you're only fighting over half of the flags in, in most matches. You'll... Yeah, I mean, Eugene's still doing pretty good of his northern battle group here. He's bringing in even more stooks, and those are pretty nasty to fight against. They're not as good as the Axe Panzer fours, mind you. But they can still provide to be a pretty tough opponent against Shermans. 
And don't worry, well, we have the potential to see as many as 12 of those here, so that's yeah. going to be deadly enough. I love the fact that it's like, okay, quick, call in the six pounders. We have basically 18 pounds worth of anti-tank gun shells coming in. Actually, no, excuse me, 30, <laughs> as two more get, are getting ordered in as well. Add in a couple of Sherman DDs, but I don't care how many you bring, that's still a beastly, beastly armored force to fight against. Yes, it is. It, it really is. And they're going to be unloading them out in the open, so they could probably get a kill or two each, but... I mean, it's gonna only take a few shots to stress him out, and and yeah, Nilla's like hill positions looking a little bit more tentative as the rifles are getting separated, and here comes the mozzie. Yeah, but he's looking for the bolt storage. He's not. He's not looking to kill the, the actual vehicles. I think he tried to kill the leader actually, which he does manage to do, but it doesn't get any vehicle kills. But you're not really going to with napalm. Oh, six pounders though in the forest in a lovely position to just catch everything out in the open. Indeed. Actually, I haven't even seen them come up over here in Defilade. We are going to see that finally an ME109 going after the Mo No, he's not going after the Mossy. What the deuce was that? Okay, I guess he's worried about the head to head. Yeah. Um, And the Stug Battle Group is getting torn to shreds, so we may have to rethink our earlier prognosis here. Yeah, Nilla really just took him to Pound Town. That was a perfectly executed bit, uh, ambush. I mean, mo a, bit, a bit of a moving ambush, to be sure. Yes. But that was a very, very deft parry. I, I really do tip my hat to you, sir. Well done, Miller. Yeah, it was a good run, and he still has a hold on that opposition man to the kill the reinforcements. His legionaries are going to be a bit of a pain to route out, but you're Canadians. You have a lot of riflemen that you can spam. <laughs> Canadian it's an entire division. It's just rifle spam and Sherman. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I am looking over here to see what the artillery response to this is, because that's that's really what we should be having here, right? Call yes. Call pipes, suppress those AT guns. All call in flying artillery with some Stukas here to try and knock out the six-pounders. That's right, and the Canadians don't have anything here. You're absolutely right. Yeah, he has... He has AA and A phase, but he has none on the field. You know, I guess it's going to change very shortly after you Stukas uh, bomb the six-pounders here. They actually get to do the loop de loop. Completely unbothered by ground fire. That is so strange for a, I would say a bazooka, but uh, a stuka here. <laughs> now yeah. down to the south, we are going to see. It looks like the legionari are moving in themselves. No. No, we are seeing some support of fire from across the river. I I wonder if this could be the sign of a Eugen push in the town. He's got to do it soon. The rifles are going to start to get rather entrenched. Yes, yes he does, and those legionaries are very good in CQC5 fights. They got semi-automatics, they got the submachine guns, they got bloody Molotov cocktails. They're very nasty, and especially just against rifles. Rifles are really bad at CQC. The only real upside is just having lots of them. That certainly is. But again, and with, with, there's always the pun that, you know, the more people you have, the easier it is to kind of screw it up. But rifles, I mean... The biggest issue with that, there's still is no AT on them, which is oh, the, yes. the one reason that just kills me about the, the Canadians. I love their spunk, I love their their enthusiasm, I love their maple syrup, but I don't like their infantry. Yeah, it's it's really annoying playing certain divisions which don't have infantry AT, because it works really well until the point your opponent brings in just an armored car, and then you're going, oh, all my guys are dying to just a single auto cannon. And the dude of the PI is dead. Uh, I guess I die now. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. I mean, this town fight down, down in the south. I mean, this is mildly amusing from an aesthetic standpoint because, screw the vehicles. I mean, we had one Sherman and they got hit by a Shrek. Outside of that, I mean, there's another Sherman kind of prowling around the edge. He'll get dealt with in a second as the, as the Pack 38s and the 233s and the Stug all engage him. Um, but we just have this this constant. You know, foot slogging kind of attrition warfare. Yes, yes, and yeah. Speaking on the anti, like the anti tank like last stuff, four Nilla's infantry, like a two three three in the town, or where he only has a stack. He doesn't have a lot of real armor to take advantage of a town fight like this, which is actually a good bonus here for Nilla. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just trying to do some rough calculations here too. So pretty much, 
he lost six or seven AT guns already. So he's lost <laughs> at least two cards. Yeah, he's yeah. now got 13 as a potential call-in. At most, he's got 13, rather. But that's that's still not what you want to be saying. You, want to, you don't want to be saying, well, I think if I lose enough AT guns slowly enough, I should be able to be okay. Like, you want to be a little more... Let's say, uh, positive facing. <laughs> yeah, he has lost quite a lot, but yeah, I do forget how much AT guns they get with just all those six pounders. And yeah, all he's taken six pounders. You do have options of taking, uh, what's it called, 17 pounders, and I believe you get Achilles as well, but he's just opting for more medium anti tank gun spam. And that's actually a pretty good strategy, as those six pounders. Are very deadly. Yes, they can't really kill tigers or panthers at long range, but most of the time you're just blowing Panzer fours and stacks exactly. and other things. So you might as well just you know get the cheap option, and they are cheap at only fifty points and good availability to boot. Well, we don't have a fire. I don't have an Achilles in here, but we do have a Firefly. Yeah. Um, and actually, just to kind of finish off that last thing, just before this Firefly comes up and you kill this two thirty three to the north, because uh, you know that's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't feel too grateful for Nilla, really, so far. I mean, Rohan just started into B phase, and he still has a good advantage, but... It's fading fast. Yeah, and he does not have the attrition to really last a long time. Like, he has three Fireflies in his entire division, and that's not a whole lot. As in, like, like he seen of the decks, he has nothing in C phase. So... He's going to have to try and make something major happen. And he really can't afford to lose a southern town position. But I don't feel like it's going to happen. As Eugene's been pretty, like, tentative down there. It's just not really making anything, you know, not being too aggressive. Is what I'm trying to say with many words. Well, quick thing, we have a boat that's engaging these Stukas here. Well, the Stukas are still able to press the target and they, they take out two more squads. Yeah, so you um, do. Now, the thing I was going to mention here is that I understand the, the just to kind of piggyback what you were saying before, I do understand the six-pounder play. It makes a lot of sense because you know that a lot of the material that you're fighting against in the first place is not going to be particularly killy. Um, and really, 17 pounds, I feel like, what, even in B and C, I think you get, what, like two and then four? Something like that? Yes. Uh, that sounds reasonable. Yeah, that does sound about right. And, and, for, and what are you really getting on the back end of that? Like, okay, cool, I got another 35 penetration, but, like, I don't need the penetration. No, you just need to... F and the six-pounder has a pretty good fire rate as well, which exactly. is very beneficial, especially due to the how the accuracy works, because the more you shoot at a target, the more accurate you become. So, if there's a six-pounder, you'll probably be more accurate faster of it compared to a 17-pounder. But don't completely quote me on the math of that. That's just... Me making a high post of it's not a, a, an estimated guess uh, during a live cast. But I do like his Firefly fan club, Norfield. Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't really have much recon to support it. He has rifles on the hill, but they don't have great line of sight. He's going to run into that 2 3 3 oh, and I don't think 2 3 3 is going to really enjoy that. But he's no, he's going to engage oh, no. the Stoke, though, instead, because the Stoke oh. is a high priority target. Yeah, 2 3 3 now he's can't. Engage yeah. 2 3 3. Yeah. Yeah. And it has no longer a 2 3 3, but if he can keep that Firefly, uh, you know, I don't think for too long he has a cluster bomber trying to come in. No. Nope, nope, he's not gonna. He oh, drops no, he the is? bombs. What the heck is going on here? Kills it. He gets the kill, so that's he one Firefly. Pin. And he gets the pin of the boat first, too. I mean, he he shreds that, uh, their morale. Yeah. Yes, the M1 or not is gonna get. Hurt quite a bit getting off the map, but that that's that's a worthwhile trade. I'll take that. You know what? Yeah, that's fine. The firefly does manage to snipe a stug at long range, so yeah, the hill position for fireflies is definitely going to come in pretty clutch. They are going to be taking some long range fire from a flak eighty eight here. Yeah, I mean Nilla has a good defensive position still, like holding the northern hills important. The the middle hills are still under his control, and he still has town, so. He can hold. Rather for 17 minutes, I don't think so. He needs to get, yeah. like, another flag right now. He needs to make well, a push happen, but I don't really see anywhere where it could, like, majorly happen. He's being helped out by the fact that Eugene is being uncharacteristically quiet here in the South. Yeah. We're finally seeing a little bit of 
movement here. As he kind of micros a squad up, a squad up, a squad up. But there's going to be a big push happening soon. You can actually almost feel the death on the air. Yeah. Yeah, if, if Eugene can just disrupt his southern position. I mean, he, he also can still just kind of hold, play for time and attrition, and still probably win the match. But yeah, if he completely captures his southern uh, town to get those two flags, I feel like he'll have his hook, line, and sinker. You know, here's here's the counterpunch that really matters. Here's a 15-9 up front. Look at the mm -hmm. north with that rifle is kind of redeploying. They're going to make another push on this hillside. And they have Ooh. enough firepower to do it. Yes, he has the Shermans backing them up. There's no real anti-tank on the hill here from Eugene. Just a bunch of, you know, rather disheartened Volk Deutsche. And, um... Yeah, this could go really well for Nilla. Like, if he can capture still, that's a pretty huge advantage to have. The one thing that I think he kind of missed out on, he being Eugene, is that he's bringing a 122 to the north, and I think that would have been a much better position to the south. Hit the town, you pick up two flags, you stop the bleed, and you put yourself in really great stead as the last minutes of B take over to C. Yeah, it definitely would have been very useful in the town just for pounding away at the infantry. But I do like this fallback. This fallback is a nice call. Yeah. You're not losing anything by letting him up onto the slope itself. Let him get in and close, and then just absolutely destroy them. Yeah, just try to catch him out in the open with your machine gun firepower. But yeah, Eugene, he really needs to try and secure that hill as soon as possible. He is bringing in some SS Legionaries and a battery pier, but no real armor or anti-armor pieces. And that's what he really needs. So he is pushing down south, finally. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And you're, and he's having the success you'd expect pretty quickly. Yeah, those Legionaries are just deadly with those Molotov cocktails, man. Yeah, man, I'd put a bottle in my hand if I could let it on fire. I'm sure it'd be pretty deadly, too. But, uh... <laughs> and, th and there's no leaders down here. I didn't realize there's no leaders. So everybody who's pinned down is a potential surrender. Yeah. And as you see, the rifles at close range just perform very poorly. Well, not for nothing. I mean, they'd probably be better served if you gave them stents as opposed to those Bren guns. But, yeah. you know, to use the room. I know with Canadians you do get access to storm like storm troops, but mm -hmm. I don't think it really would have helped out all that much in this. Well, they have satchel charges, I believe. So yes, they do. It would have been a bit better, but only a five-man SMG team. Also true. And I personally find that like the smaller five-man, like smaller five-man teams and SD2 like storm troopers and whatnot, just don't perform that great. Really, they get, they get killed too quickly. And and that's the thing. And I kind of we I know you and I have kind of theory crafted about this, you know, both on cast and off cast. I can't help but wonder that a five-man squad will always be less is less effective than a ten-man squad. Yeah. Literally every single time. And I mean, yeah, go ahead, please. No, it's like if, uh, like, you're seeing with Hungarians. Like, Hungarians very good because they got big, beefy squads. Yes, it's mainly just riflemen, but it's just about having numbers, really, in SD2 with yes. your infantry squads for the most part. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, the Canadians continue their, their rather hefty struggle here. They have lost both of the flags to the south. That, they, picked up, they picked up one to the north. What happened? They picked up that, that slope on the north. Yeah. Oof. That's not a good sign over here for Eugene. But he at least is delaying death for another couple of minutes here. Yeah, and it's only down to 12 minutes now for Nilla. So, I'd say, I, I think with just this plus, plus run bleed, especially with how Nilla's pushing, he might be able to really secure it, because... By the time it gets to the 12 minutes, it'll be only, you know, 30 minutes into the match, only 10 minutes into C phase, so... I think he will have just enough to last into, into that. I just don't feel like if he... If it goes back to a trove trove for too long, he's gonna be buggered. I do think Eugene is, is trading territory he doesn't have, though. Yeah. I do love these, these phase withdrawals. But I don't like the fashion of which is kind of being done, if it makes any sense. Yeah, and I think his real like detriment up north is he just doesn't have any stugs. He needs those stugs to be trading efficiently. The keepers, uh, it's really just the central position is going down mainly due to the rifles and the Shermans. And some stugs or anti-tank guns, yeah, definitely could have, you know, 
blew up the Shermans and the rifles can't do anything because they don't have anti-tank. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, which is um, like a please. downfall of like 17th because you don't have... You're really just relying on Starks. You do have good anti-tank. We have the Agpanzers out, so never mind. I mean, as we've seen in the last cast, the Agpanzers are some of the best goddamn tanks in this game. They certainly are. They certainly are. Actually, I'm kind of surprised looking at the... You know, the Shermans continue to pound down on the Flak 88, and these Legionari get themselves ready to receive some Iron Rain. Um, I am surprised by the rather underutilization of the artillery tab. Is that because he was going so heavy with that kind of strange opening, or what? Do you think? Vanilla? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think because he's just trying pretty hard of just wanting to get as many frontline units out. They're using... He does have, you know, a few of these ram off maps being brought in, and they've been used pretty effectively to pin down these flak 88s, and now the third barrage coming in to pin down the left, what's left of infantry on the hill for Eugenia. He's making it count. He, he sure. is making it count. And we're down to a, a 2 plus again here for, for Nilla, as he does manage to re-secure the town position, just with good use of Humber Mark Freeze and Shermans. I think these Yog Panzers right here should be driving south, move them across the actual river. And at this point, yeah, I mean, the worst thing to worry about is a single Sherman 3, and you've got to know that you outclass everything that remains of your opponent's armor. Yeah, he really needs to get those Yog Panzers into the fight because I think they're going to be what will clutch it for Eugene, especially if he can fight over that hill position. Mm -hmm. Like, knock, you knock out the Shermans on the hill, I mean, you can just. You pretty much retake the hill. It's really just down to the up one Sherman, yeah. And up oh, north of Sherman at long range is not having a good time being engaged by multiple anti tank guns. Or was multiple. Also, was uh, he also had uh, a couple other friends there, too. Unfortunately, the friends uh, decided to return to the great motor pool in the sky. I don't understand the investment of a lot of Shreks over here to the south. If you can help me understand that one. Uh, I guess he wants to just try to blow up the Shermans and Humbers, yeah, because you can knock him out and he can engage efficiently with the infantry. Once again, he doesn't really have... He's not really spending the points to get an armor down south. He's just mainly focusing on infantry, which I, I get in the current predicament because he really needs more of the armor up north here. But Nilla is just continuing on the pressure, spamming rifles to try and get into that northern... Position and if he can hold out position of rifles, even just temporarily, that uh, give mm -hmm. Nilla a lot of breathing room. True, it's very, very true. But three minutes until midnight over here for Eugene, and I'm surprised we also haven't seen any kind of control, you know, attack move orders here. Yeah, yeah, he really needs to try and secure that southern town. That's really Eugene's best bet into stopping his plus two bleed. I think he's going to be... No, okay, no, those SS Legionaries are going to be brought into the central position to try and take back Yat Hill. Which is also what he needs to do. And he is finally moving up his Jagdpanzers to try and trade with the Shermans. Yeah, such as they are, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Bizarrely enough, if he takes out the Bofors, he might be have enough air power on hand, except for that Yonkers, um, to force the northern front. Yeah, yeah, he's managing to just pin down a lot of those rifles, yeah, and that choke point of the artillery, and also just the ungodly amount of flak 88s he's using. But, uh, yeah, I think we're... I thought we were going to see a southern push here with the infantry. Oh, no, no, he is moving up again. Down south with Legionaries. If he can... Sherman did go down. Yeah, he did yes. manage to Shrek it, so... And the, hum and the Humber's still there. Never mind. Yeah. He can still kill... The Humber shouldn't be too much of an issue if he manages the micro efficiently, but... He might be able to take back his southern town position, which would be a huge benefit for Eugene here. Yeah, yeah he gets one flag... He gets a second. Yes. yes. And there's only two rifle squads in there and a rather lonely armored car. And now we're getting, I mean, we're 25 minutes into the game. It went back to a trove trove. 
And I think this I... is the time when Nilla's really starting to hurt in terms of, of activation. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's actually what I was going to say is that, you know, 25 minutes in, I don't know how many Canadians are left to give their life for Commonwealth and country here. Yeah, you only have so many riflemen, and he's been losing a lot of them. Yes. Yes. Yes, he well, has. At least three more and a leader being brought into the south. That's a rather desolate, lonely, desolate Sherman over here to the north. Um, and we're indeed, yeah, geez, these rifles are not able to get into the into the tree line up here in the middle hill, and that's going to prove their undoing as legionari are just going to just carve into shreds. Yeah. Which is funny, most of these legionaries are just literally single-man squads. <laughs> yeah, they only have the uh, semi-auto rifles. This is not the outgrade firepower at long range. Rifles have a good chance, but they have two style veterans sheet, and they're in cover. So that really evens the uh, playing field. Yeah, very much a Rambo moment for them, I imagine. Yeah. Yep, yep. But yeah, Trove Trove, this is giving Eugene very much needed breathing room. And hey, you can just blow up the rifles with long range artillery, which also is a good idea. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Take out the, the six binder to the north as well. You could even potentially pick up another flag up there. Yup, yup. And then down south, uh, Nilo is trying to push hard to take back this town, but he only has so many rifles. It's, it's really coming down to Humber, keeping him here. I think that Humber was to go down. He, he will have a very hard time dealing with the horde of angry Italians and Germans. Well, the kind of, I'm not going to say funny thing, but the kind of strange thing is there's so many of these peak are just swarming in here as well. Yeah. And more are being thrust over here in the center. So, oh yeah, this, so this hillside in the center, it is a 12-12 down south. He's lost one of those? No. I would have thought there was, oh, maybe 13-11. Oh, oh, geez. So this is that oh. tight, tight struggle over here on that hillside. Oh, yeah. Nilo just needs to hold for three minutes this hill. You know, two Yag Panthers being brought in. There's an oriented tank to deal with him nearby. That Ram OP wishes it was a regular Ram with a six pounder, but alas, he is not. And the six pounder himself is not in a good position. No. Oh. No. no, he's not. And this this reinforcement column of Pegrins that was calling up before, six more squads. It's going to be enough to get a 12 12 back again. And with that, actually. We're also seeing another push in the south. So the Legionari have been allowed to stop fighting for half a second. And the Peak Runs are just going to start just destroying these rifles. Yeah. The Humber has fell into a rather nasty trap of running out of ammunition. So he's completely useless now. You are seeing Sackhounds AA and Sherman's being, A Sherman being brought in to try and stemmy the tide. And that should be able to hold things off for a bit, because there's no real long-range AT. Even just a single Yak Panther in this town would make such a huge difference here for Eugene. It would, but he's holding the territory he needs to. He's got to get that center that center thing, though. Yeah. Yeah, he really needs to get that back under control. It's really... It's just coming down to, like, um... Frontline cheese array. Where he's mm -hmm. just trying to barely hold on to that flag, and there are just a few riflemen nearby here. And also, he's getting his six pounders into a pretty sneaky position. If he can knock out his yak pounders, I don't think Eugene's gonna have a very good shot of taking back this hill. We have two minutes to find out. Why did he redeploy? Why did he deploy his peak runs so? Oh, I think because the six pounders were uh, sniping that road. As you can see. That would make sense. Wouldn't yeah. It? That's a very sneaky move here from Nilla, but it's going to pay off by de delaying those reinforcements by just a few minutes, which is all Nilla needs. It's oh, dear needs. God. Just attack, move with everything. You have nothing to lose. Yeah, he needs to just try and secure something. I mean, he can't really secure anything down south. And then, well, he might be able to get that flag yeah, on, by could. the bridge. He what? absolutely could. Yes, yeah. he's, he would take crazy losses to do it, but he's got 60 seconds to death. You gotta do something. I oh, so close to getting that flag on the hill, but the artillery's not really coming in clutch here. The battery Fuhrer gonna be leading the ray. I think he's just going to tip it. Yes, he does. Giving Eugene the breathing room, but Nilla's gonna be 
doing the large counter-attack here of two rifles, a Sherman, a six-pounder, a Bofors, a whole, you know, menagerie of Canadian, you know, reinforcements here. But yeah, he just needs to kill the battery if you're, I mean, the Agpants is, ah, oh, he's backing off. In the end, like you said, Khan, he really just needs to be attack moving everything at this point. He's got three squads of infantry up to the north. I've just been sitting there for the four squads, excuse me. I've been there, there for I don't know how long. Yeah. He's All these squads to the south. Now he's finally getting them into movement here. But that that was a that this is a strike that's taken way too long to do. Yeah, yeah. He definitely could have been a bit more aggressive down south in the town. But now with the reinforcements or the stack counter, the A and the Sherman. He ain't gonna be able to do much, and he finally gets a stug here, no, but... getting quite holy. Yeah. I'm sorry? He finally has a stug here down south, but it's too late. And now Nilla's yeah. gonna take the victory, just... Just barely, yeah. Like, that was I, I, close. I thought we were heading for a... C phase, you know, switcheroo. Yeah. But no, like, you... Like, the six-pounder ambush here on the road... Yes. Pretty much got nil of the match, so very good job, and literally a thousand point difference between both sides. The perfect average. Very, very true. I'm trying to see if there are any kind of real standouts here. Not too much. Got a couple of kills here and there, a couple of guys who got more to themselves. But when it comes right down to it, I mean, these fights, usually with the third Canadian, or this one flat Canadian who's got three kills. Well, three decent ground kills and a couple of uh, you know uh, foot sloggers. Um, these fights, especially the third Canadian, it's rare to see some crazy, crazy standout individual. You might see a Sherman, you might see a Firefly who's done really, really well, but the foot sloggers, they're there just to kind of agitate that dirt and to take it and just hold it. So yeah, yeah, and it was just I, I he was probably just out of stuff by that point when the match ended, but. It was just enough to get the victory, and, well, the victory is all that really matters in the SD League. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, any final thoughts, sir? Uh, none today. Well, and folks, in that particular case, then, thanks so much for joining us over here with our coverage as we continue through Season 5 of the SD2 League. Um... As always, come back next week for some more great replays. Until then, I'm Con O'Rourke. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.